Good afternoon. I'm Pat Living with the Department of Health and Social Services and your moderator for the COVID-19 update for Wednesday, August 19th. We are joined today by the Yukon Premier, Sandy Silver, and the Yukon's Chief Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Brendan Hanley. Our sign language interpretation is being provided by Mary Thiessen, and André Boursier from French Language Services Directorate will translate any questions from French-speaking journalists. Following our speakers, we will go to the phone lines for questions from reporters. We will call you by name, and you will each have one question plus one follow-up. Premier Silver. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us again on the traditional territory of the Ta'anquachin Council and the Kwan Dun First Nation. I'm pleased to be here again with Dr. Handley. Uh, today, we're sharing more information about the ongoing efforts, enforcement efforts, uh, as well as uh, some phase three changes uh, that are to come. We are moving quite quickly into fall in the Yukon. Uh, this means that we are in our third season of uh, COVID-19 updates. We have come so far and I am so very proud of the incredible effort that Yukoners have, have done uh, to keep this territory safe. Uh, each and every one of you have, uh, have made significant changes, uh, adjustments and sacrifices to help reduce the spread of COVID-19 and uh, uh, we can't thank you enough for all that you're doing. Uh, this week marks a major milestone in our COVID-19 journey uh, as Yukon schools are welcoming students back for the school year. The fact that we are able to open schools shows just how well UConn is doing. Uh, we are in a position to welcome back students, uh, and that's a very good thing. I want to thank uh, everybody involved to getting us to this point. Thank you to the parents and to the students for your patience as plans were being developed and issued. Uh, thank you to the school communities, uh, the, the custodial folks, the, uh, the educators, the administrators, school councils, bus drivers, uh, everybody for, uh, for all the planning that you've done uh, to keep the students safe while, uh, while opening up classrooms to education. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to thank the First Nations governments and communities for working with us on these plans. Uh, I want to thank uh, the busing companies and also Mayor Dan Curtis and the city of Whitehorse for adapting, responding, and doing your part uh, to transport uh, our students safely uh, to and from the schools. Thank you very much. All of this work is grounded in balancing the uncertainty of a global health pandemic and every student's right to a safe education. I know the Minister of Education and her team are firmly committed to making this school year work sa safely. School plans are adaptable uh, and changes will happen as we continue to learn and to monitor and to respond to our health situation, our public health situation. And this work will happen in collaboration with school communities, with our government, and of course the Chief Medical Officer of Health. School operations will also be monitored and adjusted as schools learn uh, how uh, learn more about how routines uh, are working for their students and for their staff, and we are committed to adapting and responding to student learning needs and public health advice over the course of this pandemic. We want all schools, uh, we want this school year to be successful for all students and all schools to be successful. Uh, the health of students, educators, and all UConners is our top priority. Good luck to the, all the students, uh, UConn students that are returning to class. I know that this year will be very difficult and, and I appreciate the, res the resilience and flexibility that you have shown as we tackle uh, what is an extremely unprecedented time where, that we're in. Turning our, turning our attention to borders, we are pleased to see the Canadian-US borders restrictions to continue. Uh, limiting those who are traveling to and through Yukon uh, is a key aspect in reducing the spread of the virus. Having the support of the Canadian Borders Services Agency is very valuable and we uh, support the decision to keep the international border closed. Yukon's enforcement efforts are continuing. Vehicles are being stopped uh, before entering Yukon and informed about the current rules. Since April the 29th, uh, enforcement staff have stopped just over 34,000 incoming vehicles. Of those, 4,139 are from British Columbia, British Columbia residents, uh, 188 residents from Northwest Territories or Nunavut, and uh, roughly 15,000 uh, have been traveling through Yukon. So far, 185 decals have been distributed to people uh, with out-of-territory plates uh, who are elig eligible to be in the Yukon. 
Residents and visitors to Yukon who are uh, required to self-isolate may receive a check-in call uh, during the 14-day self-isolation period. This is to provide information and to help uh, ensure compliance uh, as we and we will continue with these calls because they have been very effective. If you are concerned, please again contact our uh, enforcement team at COVID-19 enforcement at gov.yk.ca or call 1-877-374-0400. If you have concerns that someone might be breaking a legal order, you can also contact our enforcement team at the same numbers and the same email address. All this information as well is available on yukon.ca. The enforcement team will follow up with all complaints to help achieve and ensure compliance. The team has already received 559 complaints to date. Non-compliance with the civil order uh, with the orders under the Civil Emergency Measures Act uh, can result in fines or possible imprisonment. Uh, six charges so far have been issued. The complaint line is available to report any violations to those rules, so please use this line if you have any concerns. And with that, I would also like to remind Yukoners to continue to be respectful uh, to those who are visiting Yukon and to those that are passing through. Be kind uh, and to people as you don't know necessarily the full circumstances of their travels. As we move into the fall, we continue to see the impacts of COVID-19 and people are feeling the impacts uh, in every corner of this territory. To measure these impacts, we've launched the Community Wellbeing uh, Survey in partnership with Dr. Handley and the Canadian Index of Wellbeing. The survey will measure well-being in the territory and will help us to better understand the impacts of COVID-19. So far, we have received more than 3,000 responses, and surveys uh, will remain open until September the 6th. Thank you to everybody who've uh, completed the survey, and if you haven't yet, you can again find more information on yukon.ca. If you're able to spare a few minutes, please fill out this survey. It's extremely important. Uh, the results of this survey will help determine our ongoing government response to the pandemic, but it'll also help us with longer-term decision-making and to ensure that the government actions work to benefit individuals and communities across the Yukon. Before handing it over to Dr. Handley, I reiterate uh, once again, please follow the guidelines for keeping yourself and your loved ones and your community safe. Keep physical distancing. Uh, so staying two meters apart uh, from everybody that's outside of your bubble. Stay home if you're sick. Don't gather in social groups of more than 10 in an indoor setting and 50 in an outdoor setting. Uh, limit your travel to rural communities. Be respectful when you do go. Self-isolate if you're returning uh, from travel to, any, uh, to anywhere outside of British Columbia or Northwest Territories or Nunavut or if you have contacted with anyone who has been diagnosed with COVID-19. And most of all, continue to wash your hands very frequently. Thank you very much uh, for your time today uh, and have a safe and healthy rest of your week. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Hanley. Thank you, Premier Silver. Good afternoon, bon après-midi. And uh, again, uh, to reiterate the, the Premier's remarks about the well-being survey, uh, yes, please, uh, the, uh, each answer, each uh, survey answered is an additional piece of valuable information uh, for us to understand uh, not just uh, important information about general well-being uh, for the for the years ahead, but for the um, specific effects that this pandemic is having on you and on us. As of today, all of our 15 individuals diagnosed with COVID-19 have recovered, and none was sick enough to require hospital care. We continue to have much to be thankful for. Although we are as immersed in a pandemic world as anywhere, we remain somewhat insulated from the direct effects of COVID. I know many people have come forward recently for testing, and I want to thank everyone who has made that effort. I recognize that testing involves a decision, then a phone call, waiting for an appointment, getting there, 
then being subjected to a decidedly uncomfortable thing put in your nose, and then self-isolating while waiting for an answer. Last week, 322 people went through this and thankfully all had negative results. Testing lots of people with symptoms, even mild ones, will help us keep COVID contained in our community and keep us ahead of community spread. And let me say, with all this testing, with case 15 recovered and with all contacts identified, we can be confident that we still do not have community spread in Yukon. From this side of the Yukon border, I, like many of you, am watching with concern, again, the rise in of cases in many areas of the country, particularly in Alberta and in BC. I have received at least a few emails asking me if we can reimpose self-quarantine for anyone entering Yukon. It might seem easy to do so. Say the word and down comes the hammer again. And there may be a point where the hammer might be necessary. That epidemic activity outside of Yukon would cause us to reimpose quarantine requirements after lifting them. But not yet and not for the future as far as we can foresee. Despite the high numbers in BC and elsewhere, I think we are in a good position to hold just where we are. Among the reasons are that most of the cases in BC are still traceable to known contacts. So what we are seeing in BC is the usual, although augmented pattern of a number of outbreaks occurring where most of the dots can be connected. Cases are largely occurring amongst younger adults and associated with social gatherings. The numbers of hospitalizations and deaths in BC remain very stable. BC is maintaining overall control due to their ability to contact trace and to test, while most of the population continue to do the right thing. By reinforcing messages to our visitors and to Yukoners returning from BC, we will keep the chances of introduction of cases into Yukon minimal. We have managed over six weeks in the BC bubble, during which we have had only one new case of COVID-19 in Yukon. More importantly, we have not had any outbreaks or even clusters of COVID. We can manage and tolerate occasional cases and even clusters and even outbreaks, so we remain well within our capacity to manage this. We've shown that we can stay the course and that we can tolerate the increased risk of opening our doors with BC. We continue on our path forward to reopening Yukon, albeit slowly. We are well into phase three and we are so far able to keep going ahead. However, with school reopening this week and with settling into another school and fall season, combined with increased COVID activity in a number of areas around Canada, I feel we are not ready to lift further quarantine measures, that, measures as yet. We will stay where we are for now. A quick look at social media shows that many Yukoners are enjoying a visit to BC while we have welcomed BC residents to Yukon. At this point, we likely have many more Yukoners heading out of territory than we have BC residents traveling north. So much as we might berate or criticize visitors, it is Yukoners who have to mind their travel manners, whether traveling within or venturing out of territory. We must need to continue to follow the safe six wherever we are, including beyond our borders and away from anyone watching us. Traveling out from Yukon to BC is a privilege that not everyone in Yukon can enjoy. Please take that privilege as a precious gift that will break if you mishandle it. A trip to Kelowna or Vancouver is not an excuse to forget everything we have been trying to learn over the past many months. And if we all remember to mind our travel manners and be careful about where we are and who we are with, then we are at no greater risk than we would be if we were locked down in Yukon. It is all about washing our hands, staying two meters apart, staying home if sick, avoiding large gatherings or crowds, and wearing a mask if we can't stay a safe distance from those not in our bubble. Travel wisely, respectfully, and safely. 
And whether you are traveling in other parts of Yukon or staying home, being respectful also means socializing in a responsible way. I know there were lots of parties over this last weekend, and some were rowdier than others. For many people I know, this is like a last summer weekend, perhaps a last fling before getting serious for the next season. But we are not immune to the potential effects of unsafe gatherings here. It only takes one case of unrecognized COVID among us to inflame a spontaneous or crowded party into something that could be catastrophic for Yukon. We all need our moments to be with each other, to celebrate, to feel the warmth of each other's company. We are social beings. But each one of us has the responsibility to carry the safe six principles into every occasion, every location, and every get-together. To date, we have held a news conference to announce each new case of COVID. And beginning today, we will no longer be doing that. We will update the case count on yukon.ca and we will issue a news release to media that is also posted as we receive test results. I will, as always, do my best to respond to media questions and I will speak to the cases in, in these regular weekly updates. But as we begin to live better with COVID-19, new cases will be and if new cases are going to be part of our ongoing business, we will treat them that way. However, when there is something that is new or unusual, of course, we will make sure we get the information out in the best manner possible. An example might be a situation where we have several cases or a cluster, or we need to do a public notification about an exposure event. I think this can be viewed as a positive step forward in living with COVID. <clears throat> Thinking back even to the H1N1 pandemic of 2009, we announced each case as diagnosed and then slowly we ta tapered off from that focus on just cases alone. Today, H1N1 is part of flu season and we can vaccinate against it. COVID may well, in some form, similarly become eventually part of our everyday lives. On another positive note, today marks the first day for indoor visits at Yukon's five long-term care facilities. While outdoor visits have been permitted for some time now, residents can now welcome designated vis visitors into the facility, and they can also designate two additional visitors for outside visits. There are still strict guidelines to follow, screening upon entry, mask and hand sanitizer use, but contact will be permitted. Specific guidelines and instructions on how to organize a visit are available on yukon.ca. This has been a long haul for both residents and their family members, but we have kept COVID-19 out of our long-term care facilities and we have kept our residents safe. Well, there's definitely an excitement in the air. Kids at Eliza Van Bibber Pelly in Pelly got to start today, school, and most of the rest of the territory are getting ready to start tomorrow. My two kids had their supplies readied and their backpacks packed yesterday. After two months away from their peers, kids are excited more than anything about seeing their friends again. I know there are still questions on everyone's mind about how well this will work out. And as the first in the country to start the school year, we also have an opportunity to show how well we can do this and how well we can work together. As the Premier did with his long list, I want to thank again all of those people who participated, the principals and teachers and the staff and departmental employees who have sacrificed so much summer time, borne a lot of stress to do everything they can to welcome our children back into the schools for what will surely be a year like no other. We all know we're doing the right thing and that we are fortunate to be where we are in the pandemic so that we can get children into school in as safe an environment as possible. The kids are ready for this, and I think they will be showing us how we can adapt and learn from our mistakes and move on. We will all learn as we go and adapt and modify plans, and we will solve problems together. But most of all, we should celebrate after a lot of angst and hard work that our children get to go to school again.
I want to wish everyone a successful start and a fantastic year. That's all for my update. Thank you. Thank you, Premier Silver. Thank you, Dr. Hanley. We'll now go to the phone lines, and we'll begin with Doug from Shown FM. Uh, no questions right now. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move to Tim from CKRW. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my question is for Dr. Hanley, and I know obviously today we've been talking about schools and going back in, but if you look at social media again, there's still lots of concern from parents. They're still apprehensive about sending their kids to school. What do you say to those parents who are still apprehensive? They may have you know, gone over all of the government plans and all that stuff. What do you say to those people who are still apprehensive? You know, it, it's, um, uh, first, I think I'd reiterate what, what I was just saying at, at the end um, here in that, um, you know, there has been, there has been so much work that has gone into this. Well, we also had to be realistic that um, undoubtedly there will be things that we will need to tweak and modify as we go. But um, again, I think there's a fundamental principle that, um, as far as I know, everyone has agreed on, and that is the, the safest place for kids to be is in school, into a face -to -face, in a face-to-face -face environment. We know that there is uh, that this is not a zero risk uh, situation. Um, we, we know that uh, we are facing some kind of a risk, um, albeit a small one, of COVID activity being in schools. But we also know that we're well equipped to deal with that risk. We also know that we are probably in a pretty envi enviable place if we look at um, uh, many places around the country, um, um, g given our lack of community spread and the paucity of cases that we have, um, as well as um, having been fortunate to learn from experience uh, over the summer in, in the country, in BC and Quebec, and, and internationally. So we have a, a lot of experience to gather. Um, we also are fortunate that uh, we are small enough we can work out things together, as, as we have done. So I don't think we've crossed uh, uh, every bridge that we're going to, I, but I think we've done a lot of forward forward thinking problem solving. And uh, um, I am very impressed when I've read through the operational plans of, of the different schools. I've had conversations with, uh, with the principals. Um, I've discussed this with uh, many times with the deputy minister, with teachers, with other, other people, with parents. So I'm feeling uh, confident um, that this is done in the best way possible for, uh, for, for our territory, for our, our people. I have no doubt, as I said, we'll be tweaking as we go, but um, I think we're in a very good situation. Is this on? There we go. Political question now for the, the Premier. Uh, kind of been a, I've been alerted to, there's kind of a survey going around from uh, Data Sciences Online, and it's actually run by a uh, liberal uh, strategist, uh, kind of gauging the, the tone of Yukoners. And one of those questions is uh, asking about a, a potential of an election, and an early election. Is this something the government uh, is considering? Are you kind of gauging the interest of Yukoners and the appetite for an early election? Uh, I'm focusing all of my attention right now on school openings. I'm focusing all of my attention right now on the fall session. Uh, we have lots to discuss in the fall, in the legislative session, uh, and so that's where I'm focusing my attentions right now. Thanks, Tim. We'll move now to Philippe from CBC North. Yes, thank you. A question for Dr. Handley. If families can now visit in long-term care facilities, will we see the return of volunteers to those facilities or to the hospital? Philippe, I know it's on the on the radar. I can't tell you exactly where that is in, in the planning, um, um, but it's something I can definitely get back to you on. Do you have a follow-up, Philippe? Uh, it would be a, a separate question, uh, perhaps for the Premier. Um, could you tell us uh, how much uh, 
spaces outside of schools have been considered, things like teaching uh, perhaps in a large tent or uh, uh, using other buildings other than school buildings. So, great question. I, I mean, basically, school operation plans, they're, they're unique to each school. Um, uh, you know, they were prepared by the school community with the guidance of, uh, of course, uh, Dr. Hanley and, the, and, the, uh, and his office uh, and the support of each department. Uh, the priority has always been in each one of these school settings to, uh, to create a, a safe learning space. Uh, and, and we believe that we've accomplished that with the existing facilities that we do have. Uh, the plans they're going to be adaptive, as, uh, as, as Dr. Hanley has spoken to. Um, you know, we are in a great situation compared to a lot of jurisdictions in that we do not have community spread right now. Um, so even though we are heading back to the classroom uh, before any other jurisdiction, uh, I think as we take a look at the concerns that we're hearing, not only uh, in each one of our communities, but also coast to coast to coast, um, the planning, the preparation that has been done with the schools, the principals, uh, the school community, the school councils, every Everybody has been uh, has been uh, amazing. It really has, and I think we've we thought outside the box in every single uh, consideration, um, every unique student, uh, every unique family situation, uh, what schools have done to develop their plans to keep everyone healthy and and safe uh, it, it, in these circumstances has been an amazing work, and uh, and we're very proud to develop a system that works for each school. Thank you. We'll move now to Haley from Yukon News. Hi, thank you. A question for Dr. Hanley. Um, are you able to elaborate a little bit on the decision to move to news releases instead of press conferences? I understand the comparison to H1N1, but it seems like anxiety is still pretty high around COVID-19, especially with kids going back to school. Yeah, I, I think it's really just an efficiency of getting out um, information, and and, um, and and as I said, I I think it's a, a way that we can uh, normalize to some extent the uh, the existence of COVID nineteen in in our world. Um, and as I said, um, as I've said for I guess months now, as we look to opening up, we know that we incur a certain risk of uh, COVID introduction. We are trying to manage and mitigate that risk and uh, by doing all of the public health measures we need to do. Um, and we know that uh, there will likely be occasional cases um, that um, that appear in the territory. I think we've shown that we uh, that we can handle these cases with with minimal minimal to no um, uh, impact to the to the health of our population um, and that we have to learn that uh, COVID is manageable and that we have to take this into our everyday lives as we manage uh, so many other risks in our everyday life. So um, I, I think it's uh, it's kind of in some ways uh, practical um, because we really do need to focus on so many other aspects of uh, of work of public health. Um, um, but but I think it's also partly symbolic in that. Um, you know, when we don't really have a lot to say about a particular case, uh, we really just want to make sure the information is put out but not dwell on it um, for too long. We, we we don't dwell on details of a particular case anyway. There's, there's often not a lot to say because we are always working to protect the privacy of the individual and their family. And we are really immediately busy uh, with all that is required in contact tracing. So really, let us continue to do the work will we'll work as public health usually does, quietly, in the background, doing the right thing, informing people, and really getting on with the job. And I, I think that just is our business. Thank you. Follow-up, Haley? No, no follow-up. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move now to Marine Laura Boreal. Oui, merci. C'est une question pour Dr. Hanley. Est-ce qu'il y a une possibilité que l'école commence et que la, les écoles doivent être remises en question, l'école en présentiel doit être remise en question au courant de l'année? So the question is for Dr. Hanley. Is there any possibility that schools will open and then you will have to reconsider as the year goes by? 
Oui, il y a toujours une possibilité. On a, on a planifié pour, pour une, euh, une variété de possibilités. Euh, à, à ce moment, je pense que c'est, euh, c'est assez peu probable euh, qu'on a, on a essayé de, de renforcer euh, euh, une, les structures qui sont euh, résistantes au, euh, au cas ou même des, des éclosions parce que on a les moyens on a le moyen de gérer euh, euh, de, de gérer une éclosion de covid euh, et de faire les notifications euh, qui euh, qui sont qui, qui sont nécessaires donc euh, mais il y a toujours la possibilité qu'on peut avoir des des éclosions partout par exemple, ou, euh, une, énorme, une énorme vague de COVID qui, euh, euh, où, euh, 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 de, de, selon, selon la situation dans le reste du pays, peut nous pousser de, 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 de prendre des décisions plus majeures ou des de réponses plus significatives significative. Donc, euh, oui, c'est toujours là, mais je pense que c'est peu probable. Could you please repeat that in English? Sure. <laughs> Not word for word. Not no. word for word, no. <laughs> <laughs> the question was, uh, would we uh, uh, consider going back on school openings? Uh, would that be a possibility during the year? And, and I was saying, uh, of course, it's a possibility, but I think it's a, a small or a remote possibility. Uh, we have to be prepared for everything in our overall response. Um, we, uh, In my mind, we would have to be in a severe situation of, say, widespread community transmission or um, multiple outbreaks or a, a dire, perhaps a dire situation like a large second wave in, in the entire country that was um, forcing us to take uh, more extraordinary ordinary measures. Really, I think what we've tried to do in our work um, with Department of Education uh, and with everyone is really to build the schools to be resistant to events. So we know we know we can handle a case. We know we can handle an outbreak. Um, we know that there might have to be local measures applied um, given certain situations. But Uh, just as we're doing with phase three as a whole, we're trying to build resilience into the system so that it can withstand these hits and carry on. So that's our aim. Merci. Uh, Avez-vous une autre question, Marine? Non, pas d'autre question. Merci beaucoup. Merci. We'll move to Gabrielle Whitehorse Star. Hi. My first question for Dr. Hanley is, is uh, we talked last week about the recommendation for masks, and it was said that masks would be available for students, and I'm wondering if there will be masks available for students with school tomorrow. Yeah, so the, well, the point is to make masks available. I guess you're asking if they're available like now, and I, I would have, I can't update you on the actual uh, situation. Um, that, that would have to come back from the department. Um, but um, Yeah, would I be particularly worried if they weren't um, immediately available tomorrow? No, I think again this is this is a recommendation. It's an extra measure. I think there's going to be enough to get on with just getting everyone used to uh, to some very new ways of doing things, um, getting kids used to these new routines, new placements in the classroom. Um, so um, uh, I, I guess the department can, uh, can update um, us all on whether they will actually be part of tomorrow. Um, but, but certainly I know their plan to be, um, to be part of what, uh, what the uh, children are going to be equipped with. Thank you. Follow up, Gabrielle? My second question is about mental health. I'm wondering if there are plans to expand mental health services as we go into the fall and winter. We know um, as it gets dark, it's a difficult time for a lot of people in a normal year, and, and this is certainly not a normal year. Yeah, uh, th th that's a great question, and, and thank you so much. And as, as you may know, mental health um, has been... 
um, a, a particular concern of mine um, for for many months now, since since really the start of uh, the pandemic, particularly in the uh, the early phases and the shutdown phases and the um, the withdrawal of services. Um, so um, and now we are we're, we're facing um, we're facing an accumulation of restrictions. Um, even as we are opening up, we still know that the impacts are still being felt, and we are also facing some yeah some uh, what we may uh, we know that uh, for some with the return of the dark there are seasonal pressures in addition to that um, I think one of the uh, uh, I think the capacity though is there and I think one of the things uh, I learned uh, among others from recently reviewing um, reviewing some of the mental health impacts and and some of the um, concerns that um, that that either caregivers or or, or patients or clients were relaying was not all of the services were that well known that we needed to do a better job of making making people aware of what services are currently available and uh, and this uh, with the coming of the fall um, people going back to work and to school I think there are opportunities to make that um, available as well the other thing I'd just point out is um, Again, I think this uh, this well-being survey will also help us because it will we'll learn more about current current impacts, current needs, um, and and to me, this is an ongoing um, ongoing issue. Back and forth of reviewing uh, services, how well they're they're being. Uh, um, uh, how well they're being provided, how well those uh, needs are being met uh, from clients' point of view, observations from the emergency room, uh, following our opioid uh, response, um, all of these measures. They're, they're so important to follow and to make sure that people are accessing services as they, as they need them. Premier Silver? Just to add, you know, over the years, uh, Minister Frost and her team at Health and Social Services has done extraordinary work to up the capacity of uh, mental wellness supports um, throughout the Yukon. Uh, in rural Yukon alone, we went from two uh, workers, uh, two uh, staff or two nurses, to uh, a component of 22 uh, uh, mental wellness uh, uh, professionals in four mental wellness hubs. Uh, Dr. Hanley's correct. The information from the mental, uh, from the uh, well-being survey, is extremely important as we uh, make sure that our our services, our programs, um, uh, reflect the need that that is identified from our citizenry. Uh, I spoke with uh, Premier Mo uh, just last week about getting the uh, mental wellness symposium back online, back on track. Uh, we really want to get all of our premiers together for a conversation about best best practices, uh, so that we can uh, share what we're doing here in Yukon, our collaborative. Approach to healthcare, uh, our, our changes in, in the healthcare system, but also taking a look to other jurisdictions to make sure that uh, we have a dialogue on the national level about best practices and what we can do to share in that information. So, uh, always looking to uh, to make sure that our uh, our ability, our programs and services fit the unique circumstances of each one of our communities. Thank you. We'll move now to Claudienne, Radio Canada. Oui. So the question is for Dr. Henley. Could you please repeat in French uh, your message to parents that are uh, afraid of uh, sending their kids back to school and the teachers who are also concerned about what's going to happen there. Oui, merci pour la question. <coughs> Et, euh, et, et c'est une question importante parce que euh, je pense que tout le monde est d'accord que l'endroit le plus sûr pour, pour la santé euh, pour, pour, la, pour la santé en général des enfants c'est dans les écoles c'est où les enfants ont l'opportunité de non seulement apprendre euh, ce qu'il faut apprendre mais, mais, mais de socialiser d'être avec les adultes
contact d'être uh, avec uh, autre, le, leurs amis, le, le comrade, um, et d'apprendre tout ce qu'il faut dans, dans un milieu social. Donc, uh, je pense que uh, tout le monde est d'accord avec ça, uh, à base. Uh, deuxièmement, on a, on a fait tout ce qu'il faut pour avoir l'environnement le plus sûr possible um, um, qui suive toutes les conditions euh, euh, nécessaires pour éviter euh, l'impact de, de COVID dans les écoles. On ne va jamais arriver à d'avoir un système parfait ou d'avoir un système imperméable. On, on, a, on est obligé de, de convivre avec COVID, de convivre avec le risque de COVID. COVID, mais dans notre société aujourd'hui, on est dans une situation enviable quand on n'a pas de transmission communauté, on a seulement de, de, un, un cas de temps en temps et donc on a, on a les moyens de, de rester euh, confortablement euh, au-delà de, de, de ce que de, de l'expérience ailleurs où on est euh, dans la situation de, euh, de, de, de démarrer l'école euh, dans une situation de transmission dans la communauté. Donc on est, on est dans une bonne état. Aussi, on a fait beaucoup de préparation et, et on, on, a, on a bien équipé de réagir s'il y a des cas, s'il y a même des éclosions dans une école. Donc, on a toute, euh, toute l'équipe de euh, YCDC, l'équipe de maladies communicables pour gérer s'il y a des cas dans une école et pour faire les communications et les réponses nécessaires. Euh, donc, en somme, euh, on, on, c'est... Euh c'est, je pense, on a, on peut jamais dire zéro que la risque est zéro, mais je pense on, on est dans une situation, euh, un très bon état pour pour démarrer euh, à ce moment et que il y a beaucoup des enfants qui sont euh, 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 sont, euh, sont, sont prêts d'avoir cette expérience. On va aussi, j'imagine, apprendre de les enfants comment vivre avec euh, euh, cette nouvelle situation dans les écoles. Merci. Avez-vous une autre question, Claudiane? Oui. En même temps, vous dites on est dans, dans une bonne position, on n'a pas de pension communautaire, on n'a pas de cas actifs. Mais vous ne voulez pas modifier les règles entourant euh, les règles de confinement, donc entourant les frontières. Pourquoi? So, you say on one hand that we are in a good position and we're in control, but on the other, you are reluctant to change the rules that we have around borders and uh, the other measures that are in place. Can you please explain why you have these two, two visions? Um, okay, je, je, je sais juste uh, de bien comprendre. La décision sur les frontières, est-ce que vous pouvez expliquer peut-être qu'est-ce que vous, vous, vous dites uh, Juste que je ne comprends pas exactement euh, le, le motif pour la question. Si aujourd'hui, plutôt, uh, I'm still not ready to this measures, I'd rather we stay where we are. Mais en même temps, okay. vous dites qu'on n'a pas de ça. Les choses vont bien au Yukon. Oui. Um, OK. Um, C'est ben, c'est juste pour avoir l'assurance qu'on peut continuer. Donc, euh, donc c'est toujours de vivre la balance euh, et de 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 pas de de pas faire trop au même temps et de pas faire trop trop vite. Donc, euh, c'est c'est toujours ma philosophie de graduellement euh, euh, graduellement euh, a fait une progression euh, d'enlever graduellement les mesures, euh, les, les mesures restrictives aux frontières euh, et de travailler avec le gouvernement pour, pour graduellement euh, transférer la responsabilité du frontière aux individuels et de gérer la, la, les, les risques comme ça. 
Donc, on, on sait, on a fait une un grande ouverture euh, avec l'ouverture à, à Colombie-Britannique, au même temps qu'on voit un, euh, plus des cas, un, un, une augmentation des cas en Colombie-Britannique aussi dans d'autres situations. Donc, toujours, on, on fait la balance et on essaie de trouver la, la bonne balance entre la, la risque, euh, la risque de, de restriction et la risque de COVID. Et donc, euh, c'est un moment, euh, une semaine très importante pour, pour notre population, c'est le démarrage de l'école. Donc, c'est où on veut le, la stabilité maximum et on ne veut pas, par exemple, euh, faire plus d'ouverture de frontières à, au même temps qu'on que veut à rassurer euh, la population et, et, et bien démarrer l'ouverture de, des écoles. Donc, c'est toujours aussi ma philosophie de ne pas, de, de pas, de pas faire trop de choses au même temps, mais, mais faire une chose et puis, euh, et puis plus tard, quand, quand tout est stable, un autre. Et c'est comme ça, on est bien équipé de ne de, de pas reculer, de ne pas, de pas nous mettre en avance. I'll just explain because uh, would, peut uh, that was a bit complicated. So I'll mm. just explain that, so uh, about that. I, I think it's my philosophy to uh, to not try to do too many things at once, and 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 really to we're always trying to keep a balance. So we know we knew that opening the the BC uh, board, uh, the the removing of the self quarantine by government a few weeks ago, uh, on um, uh, based on my advice, uh, was a big. Step. Step. It was a big step for us. Um, it was a welcome step for many, but it was a step that was uh, that that people are still uh, nervous about, and and it's a step that we made at a time when uh, BC cases were low, and we have watched cases in BC um, increase. So we know we're managing a risk, and uh, and and as I've said, uh, we've done that I think very well, and we've shown that we can do this. Um, but as we have now, another big step this week, and that is the kids starting in school. This, this is another huge leap forward for UConn, um, and, uh, and, and, and we know that it's a time that, that many are feeling anxious about. We know we need to kind of get this, uh, get this started, get kids comfortably in place. Um, so, th so this is why I'm saying this is a time to remain stable with other measures, Let this happen, get it right, um, get everyone comfortable, and then we can consider other other parts of phase three um, when when we feel confident about where we are. Thank you. Thank you, Premier Silver. Thank you, Dr. Hanley. I'd like to thank everyone for their time today. Our next COVID-19 update is scheduled for Wednesday, August 26th at 2 p.m.